So in this video, we're going to be making a pencil or charcoal type effect in PhotoP, and we're going to do that really quickly in only a few steps. So the first thing to do is to go to the background layer of our image and press Ctrl or Command J, depending on if you're a PC or a Mac user, to make a duplicate. And I'm going to right click on that and click Convert to Smart Object, just so that the few effects we add to this we can adjust later on if we need to non-destructively. And then I'm going to change the blending mode to Color Dodge. And with that layer still highlighted, I'm going to press Ctrl or Command I to invert the layer. And you'll know you're doing it correctly at this stage if your screen looks kind of like this. It's mostly white, but maybe there's a few little bits of color pixels here and there. So if you see some little spotty bits of detail, that's OK, but the image should be predominantly white. Now what we're going to do is go to the filter menu. No, we're not actually. Let me just correct that. First of all, we're going to go to Hue Saturation Adjustment Layer and actually decrease the saturation. You don't have to do this part first, but the look will make more sense if you do. And then go back to the Layer 1, so our inverted layer, and go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And if I just zoom into the image a little bit, what you can see is already this combination of effects as, as sort of given as a kind of a black and white pencil charcoal -y type effect. Now you can tweak the radius on the blur to thin out the lines. If you go to the radius quite low, it's taking the equivalent sort of pencil lines as it were, very, very fine and light. And consequently, if you go the other way, it's going to get heavier and heavier. If you push it past a certain point, it starts to look a little bit strange and blotchy. So there's, there's definitely a sweet spot, which is uh, probably subjective from your point of view, what you prefer and what you like. Once you get it around somewhere that you're happy with, click OK. And because it's a smart object, you can always double click back on that blur setting and adjust it again in real time. So once we've got that, there's a couple of other little things we can do to just give it some final tweaks and push it in a certain direction. One of those is we could add a curves adjustment layer. And just with this, it's just another way we can then just play around with the overall contrast and the balance of the of the pen pencil strokes as it were but without having to go back into the filter all the time so we can do a curve we can do like a little a shape and put some sort of overall contrast to the effect which is gonna push the shadows in a certain direction make sort of areas um omitted from the from the effect so you can really tweak this around and, and sort of get a kind of look that you like another thing i like to do is on the main layer itself again we're going back to this layer one um i like to add a filter that's a bit of a strange one. It's called Wind. It's under the Stylize menu, so Filter Stylize. And I've just been playing around with this. And what this does, it just it sort of drags the pixels one way or the other. So you can go from the left, from the right. It's not really the best example of an image to see in isolation what it's doing. But if I just go to a bit on the face where you can see some shading around the, around the nose on the cheeks, if I change the technique to Stagger, which is actually the strongest version of the effect, you'll see there we've kind of got these, now we've got these slightly smudged, almost like um, shading marks on the, on the shadow areas themselves. Now, I've got a trick for this as well, because that is a little strong for my taste. But if you go back to Blast, which is actually the, an in-between kind of strength, it's not strong enough. So we need to kind of get between two of these settings, but we don't have an option here. But this is where we can do a little trick. So if we come over to the wind adjustment, which is now under our smart filters, we can turn that on and off as we as we please. Then we can go to the little cog icon on the very right hand side of that, the very end, and double click on that. And that's going to take us to an additional opacity slider, but just for that one specific effect, so not the whole layer. So what we can now do is we can fade back the opacity or the strength of that wind layer independently of the controls on the actual wind, wind filter, if, if that makes sense. So we take this back to something that um, gives an effect that I personally like. So around there, I click OK. And you can create almost like a bad photocopy effect with this as well. And you can really play around with it and get some interesting results.